美术。Oh Allah, benefit me with what you taught me, and teach me what will benefit me, and provide me with beneficial knowledge. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to the second in a series of Arabic tutorials brought to you by Maysour in conjunction with Al Medina students. In today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on one way in which we can construct a jumlatun ismiyatun, a nominal sentence in Arabic. It was mentioned in lesson one. That a nominal sentence is simply a sentence that begins with a noun. But now we want to dig a little deeper and understand how we can actually make a jumla tun ismiya tun in Arabic. A nominal sentence consists of two parts. Part one, a subject, pronounced in Arabic as mubtada, mub. Tada. Now, the mubtada is actually the focal point of the sentence. It refers to the thing or the person we're speaking about. The second part is called a predicate, or we can say the news. In Arabic, it's pronounced khabar. Khabar. Now, the khabar or the predicate actually gives us information regarding the subject. As for the subject of a jumla tun ismiya tun, then it is usually ma'rifa. Ma'rifa, which means definite. Whilst the khabar, on the other hand, is usually nakira. Which means indefinite. For example, we can say al qalamu maksurun. Al qalamu maksurun. Which means the pen is broken. Or we can say, "At-talibu maridun." At-talibu maridun. The student is sick. We can also say, "Al-ma'u baridun." الماء بارد، which means the water is cold. In this example, we can see that the sentence begins with a noun which is معرفة definite, and it ends with one ضمة. And the second word, the خبر, is نكرة indefinite, and the sign of it being indefinite. Is the tanwin. Likewise, in the second sentence, a talibu is ma'rifa. It has alif and lam at the front, and it finishes or it ends with one bama. This is the mubtada, the subject. The second word, the khabar, maridun, is nakira, indefinite, and the sign of it being indefinite is the tanwin at the end of the word. And finally, the last sentence, al ma'u baridun, al ma'u is ma'rifa, is definite. This is the subject. It begins with alif and lam, and it ends with one dhamma. Baridun is the khabar, and the khabar here is nakira, indefinite, and the sign of it being indefinite is the tanween at the end of the word. It was mentioned in lesson one that nouns ending in tanween. Anakira, indefinite. So we put a or an in front of the word. For example, Beitun.
can be translated as a house. Similarly, masjidun, masjidun can be translated as a mosque. However, this is not the case if the khabar is an adjective, a describing word. For example, the word maksur means broken. It is an adjective. However, we do not translate this word as a broken. We just say broken. Similarly, maridun Maridun means sick and we do not translate this word as a sick we just say sick and finally baridun means cold but we do not translate this word as a cold we just say cold this is because Adjectives do not take the indefinite article a or an in front of the word, although in these examples they are all nakira, indefinite. It was mentioned in lesson 1 that Arab grammarians consider pronouns as nouns. This is because a pronoun takes the place of a noun to avoid repetition. Ponder over the following passage. Ismail is married and Ismail has two children. Ismail used to work as a teacher in Jeddah until Ismail was notified that Ismail was accepted to the Islamic University of Medina. What's wrong with the following passage? As we can see, the name Ismail has been mentioned far too many times. After the first time it's been mentioned here, it's been mentioned here, 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 and here. To avoid this problem, we simply replace the name after the first time it's been mentioned with the relevant pronoun. In this case, we say he. So it reads, Ismail is married and he has two children. He used to work as a teacher in Jeddah until he was notified that he was accepted to the Islamic University of Medina. It is for this reason that Arab grammarians consider pronouns as nouns because they simply take the place of a noun that has already been mentioned. Pronouns are also considered ma'rifa because they point back to somebody or a thing that has already been mentioned. In this case, the first time he is mentioned, it's going back to who? Ismail. So if we were to say, for example, Ana Talibun Ana Talibun We can see this sentence begins with a mubtada, a subject which is also ma'rifa, definite. And we also have talibun, which is the khabar, the predicate, which is also nakiratun, indefinite. And when we translate this sentence into English, ana talibun, it means I am a student. We can also replace the mubtada, the subject, with a name. For example, Muhammadun Rajulun. Muhammadun Rajulun. Muhammad is a man. Similarly, we can say. Bilalun Tajirun Bilalun Tajirun Bilal 
is a merchant or Bilal is a businessman. Now, when we have a mubtada, a subject which is ma'rifah, definite, as in the case Muhammad or Muhammadun, and a khabr, which is nakira, indefinite, as in the case rajulun, we read is, am, or are, between the two. So we say, Muhammad is a man. Bilal is a merchant. Don't let the tanween at the end of Muhammad and at the end of Bilal lead you to think that these two names are nakira, indefinite. The vast majority of masculine names in Arabic carry the tanween. And they are not nakira, indefinite, but rather they are ma'rifah. In summary, we've looked at the different ways of constructing a nominal sentence in Arabic when the subject is a, a thing, for example, al-qalamu maksurun, b, a person's name, for example, muhammadun rajulun, muhammad is a man, and finally, c, a pronoun, for example, ana mudarrisun, huwa talibun, I am a teacher, he is a student. I pray that Allah Ta'ala accepts this small effort from me and from you. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.